Valery Romanenko, an aviation expert and leading researcher at the State Aviation Museum of Ukraine, noted that after the strike on the Olenya airbase, Russia has to move bombers to the Amur region. He shared the information on Espresso TV. We hit the Olenya airfield from a distance of 1,850 kilometers, setting a historic record like an Olympic jump. We are awaiting the next strikes. This demonstrates that there are no places in the European part of Russia where Russians can reliably hide their aircraft, Romanenko emphasized. According to the aviation expert, the only option left for Russia is to move the bombers to another strategic aviation base near Serishevo in the Amur region. It is very far away. Officers used to be sent there for immoral behavior and other offenses. Now, given their actions, this remote base is their only option, explained Romanenko. Defense intelligence of Ukraine strikes at the polar base Olenya. On July the 27th, drones of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine hit a Tu-22M3 strategic bomber at the Olenya airfield in Russia. The Defense Intelligence of Ukraine added that the Olenya airfield is located 1,800 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. The damage dealt to aircraft, such as the Tu-22M3 bomber, is vital because the Russian military industrial sector currently does not have the means to produce such equipment. This is something that the Soviet Union could produce, and that is why Russian forces are trying to hide them so far away. While Ukraine does not have permission to fire Western-made long-range weapons deep inside Russian territory, the embattled country frequently uses domestically produced drones for these attacks. Olenya airfield is located next to the town of Olenegorsk, where iron ore mining takes place. A closed military town, Vysoki, is home to the air crew, the service personnel and their families. Further into the wilderness, north of Vysoki, is one of Russia's main central storage facilities for nuclear warheads, located in the Bolshoi Ramazero. Olenya airfield is frequently used by Russia's strategic aviation to attack civilian infrastructure in Ukraine with cruise missiles. It was Tu-95MS bombers from Olenya that less than a month ago bombed the children's hospital in Kyiv. Russia began its offensive on the Kharkiv region much earlier than planned. As the Telegraph writes, due to the significantly premature offensive of the occupiers on the Kharkiv region, other units that were supposed to simultaneously advance in the Donbass were not properly prepared. The Russians launched their offensive on Kharkov about a month before they were scheduled to, said Michael Kaufman, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. The idea of the early start was to catch the Ukrainians off guard, but it also caught the Russians off guard. The 4th Army Corps, assigned to the Donbass operation, had not yet completed training and was about a month behind before the assaults there really began. When the Kharkiv operation began to fail, the Russian High Command withdrew troops from Donbass to send them north. Perhaps this delay saved the Ukrainians from collapse. The publication writes, Russia launched its offensive at the front when Ukraine was in a vulnerable state. The most pessimistic forecasts for this summer were based on Ukraine's critical shortage of men, ammunition and prepared defensive positions. Each of these problems has begun to be addressed, albeit belatedly. As The Telegraph writes, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky signed a law on mobilization in April. The figures are classified, but sources familiar with the matter said that several times more troops were assembled in a month than before. In the coming months, they will begin to arrive at the front en masse, the publication writes. Also in April, the US Congress approved a military aid package shortly before the attack on Kharkov. The package has already reduced, but not eliminated, Russia's advantage in ammunition. The F-16 fighters are expected to arrive this summer. All this means that Russia's dominance on the battlefield is likely to be destroyed in the winter, and Moscow has its own headaches. Russia is not running out of armored vehicles, but its reserves are dwindling, the publication notes. Russia has also recently increased its salary offer for volunteers, indicating that it is having trouble recruiting. It may have to slow down its operations at some point. 